Islam is a set of principles. Islam is a set of core principles. You call them usul. Where do you get those principles from? You get those principles from the Quran. What are those principles? It's very simple. What those principles are is what does the Quran want you to bring into your life? It's simple. Tell me some qualities Allah would like you to have according to the Quran. Anybody? Any qualities Allah would like you to have in you, in your personality? Hmm? Mer mercy, sure. P compassion. What else? Patience, very good. Humility. Love, taqwa, dhikr, remembrance, consciousness, courtesy, brotherhood, truthfulness, justice, honesty. Yes? These are the usul of Islam. The dhikr of Allah, the taqwa of Allah, sabr, ukhuwa, hawl, these are the usul of Islam. How do you know what is the essence of Islam? Look at all of the ayat of the Quran that say, Wallahu yuhibbu, and whatever he says. Allah loves, whatever Allah, Allah loves, al-sabiri, al-muttaqeen, al mu'min. whatever he loves, and when he says, Wallahu ma'a, Allah is with, in Allah ma'a, then you know these are the usul of Islam. And if Allah says, la'allakum, so that you, so that you have taqwa, so you can think, so you can remember, so you can ponder. That's what the essence of Islam is. It wants you to become a person of remembrance, of gratitude, of patience. You with me? This is the essence of the Quran. The Quran is telling you this is what you want to bring into your life. Now, these are ideals, aren't they? Aren't they? Ideals are abstract. How do you take an abstract idea and bring it into your life? That is why Allah gave us the major commandments of Islam. So every major commandment of Islam actually reinforces an ideal. So give me a major commandment of Islam. Pray. Salah. Allah says, أَقِمِ salata li dhikri." Establish prayer so you can remember me. Is remembrance of Allah fundamental? It is. So if, if you want to reach that fundamental, that ideal, then the ideal way to reach it is what? Salah. Is taqwa a fundamental? Is the taqwa of Allah the, and one of the usul? It is. Allah says, كُتِبَ عَلَيْكُمُ الصِّيَامُ كَمَا كُتِبَ عَلَى الَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِكُمْ لَعَلَّكُمْ فَتَّقُونَ He gave you fasting so you can have taqwa. In other words, taqwa is this abstract thing. How can I practically implement taqwa in my life? Here's an exercise from God that will help you bring it into your life. It's called fasting. You understand? So our practices in the religion are supposed to reinforce the values of the religion. I'll say that again in easy English, no Arabic. The practices of our faith, the purpose of them is what? To reinforce... Give me this paper, you have 10 minutes. Okay. okay. The practices of our faith are there to reinforce what? The values of our faith. That is the essence of our religion. That is the essence of our religion. Everything else, there are other tiers which we won't talk about today. But you know the crisis of our ummah today? We have the practices left. The practices of the religion are alive and well, in many cases. But they are completely disconnected and divorced from the values that they're supposed to bring into your life. You with me? And that, therein lies the problem. What does a book of fiqh tell you? What does the book of fiqh tell you? The practices. What does the book of fiqh not tell you? The values that it's connected with. Where do you get that? You get that from the Quran. You know, people when they look at the, the Quran only to derive a legal ruling, and that's it. Then that's all you're going to get. You're going to get a religion that's made up of just a bunch of rules. But these aren't empty rules. These are rules for a reason. They're supposed to reinforce something in you, bring something into your character. And if you're not even aware of why you're praying, then it's okay for a teenager to come up to me and ask, my mom keeps telling me to pray, I don't even know why we're supposed to pray. I don't say, astaghfirullah al-azim, ya ayyuhal kafir. Ayyuhal muhtar. 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 I don't say any of it. You know why? Because it's not his fault. He, wasn't, he was never told that these practices are actually tied directly to what Allah wants him to become. And he, if I tell him that, it's not as convincing. But if he learns that himself, from who? From Allah. Let Allah tell him. Let the Quran tell him. Then he'll be okay. He'll be alright. He'll survive. You know? We have to bring people back to the usul. We even redefine 
Rasul. Some people say, well, the Rasul are these technicalities in this Aqidah book. That's our Rasul. I'm like, okay. Who decided that? You know, أَأَلْتُمْ أَعْلَمُوا أَمِ اللَّهِ You know better than Allah does? Do you know better than Allah does? So I, you know, I have less than ten, I have seven minutes left. In these seven minutes, what I want to sum up my rant as follows. We need to be aware of our history, number one. We need to be aware, aware of the good things happening in the Muslim world around us, number two. We need to be aware of the essence of the Qur'an, and we need to facilitate that, number three. We need to connect again with the Qur'an. If we're going to talk about reviving these, us as a people, we cannot become a civilization again until that book that turned a bunch of Bedouin Arabs that were ready to kill each other over a goat that died 10 years ago turned into the greatest civilization in human history. Until that book does not become the center of our thinking, we will not become a civilization again. When you travel to Saudi, or Dubai, or Qatar, or Pakistan, or Bangladesh, or Egypt, you travel anywhere, it is hard to call us a civilization. Honestly, it hurts me to say this, but it's hard. It's really, really difficult.